Hello, this is Mr. Hornsby83. Uh, I am here with my Halloween Havoc 1996 review. So, uh, let's start off. Uh, this was the big build-up leading into Piper Hogan at Starcade for that year. So, let's start off with the first match, which was... Um, Dean Malenko versus Rey Mysterio for the Cruiserweight Championship, which uh, went quite a while and this was around that time they're like oh Dean Malenko's gonna be very aggressive and all that until he gets he's gonna be Mr. Business until he gets the Cruiserweight title back which he did eventually win the match I believe this was uh on the verge of his face turn as well because before that he was a heel but um uh, so Dean Malenko, I even think he shook Rey Mysterio's hand after the match. Um, then next up, I believe it was DDP versus Eddie Guerrero for the Battle Bowl ring. I think it, Eddie Guerrero won it, but DDP stole it and claimed it was his because he had won it, you know. I don't know. Wait a minute. I think DDP won it. I think Eddie Guerrero stole it from him and... uh DDP wasn't too happy about that, so he wanted to... So DDP wins the match with the Diamond Cutter. This match was pretty good. Um, which we were getting ready to head toward that push DDP was about to get, especially going toward DDP's face turn. Um, next up after that was uh, Jeff Jarrett versus the Giant. Ric Flair was in the corner of Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett was an honorary horseman, and at this time, the Giant and the NWO had attacked Ric Flair and injured him. And the Giant had stole the U.S. title from Ric Flair, which Ric Flair had just won, I think. I think he... I, I can't remember when he won it. I think it was Hall Wild that year, but, um... Um... Nothing too much about this match, except for... Giant was getting ready to choke slam Jared on the outside and Ric Flair low blowed him, which was pretty funny. Um I think that was about it. Then after that, I believe we got I think it was Rick Fla I think it was six against Chris Jericho. I could be wrong, I don't know if it was six against Chris Jericho or Lex Luger against Arn Anderson, but I think I think it was no, it might be. I'll go with Lex Luger versus Arn Anderson. Now, this feud had started because Arn Anderson kept questioning Lex Luger's loyalty to WCW, this and that, and you know he was trashing Sting because they all thought Sting had turned and went high tail. And uh, Arn Anderson, Lex Luger, before the match, said he's going to show a very aggressive side of himself, and he's going to injure. Um, He's going to injure Arn Anderson, um, which he did pretty much what he said he was going to do because Arn Anderson got injured allegedly in the match and all that. And um, Luger won the match, proved he, and then not too long after that, Arn Anderson was like, you know what, Luger's braver than what I thought he was. He was so aggressive. I was so uh, impressed with him uh, at Halloween Havoc not too long after that. Um, I think the six. And Jericho match was before the Luger Arn Anderson match, but I'm getting ready to do a six Jericho match. Um, NWO had their little interview. They were up in the uh, audience area around the cassette stand. That was their little interview area or whatnot. Um, this match was pretty good as well. In the end, six ended up winning uh, to kind of. I guess start a roll that the NWO was on anyway. The only loss they had was the Giant. Or no, the Giant won as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, at that point, we had also seen the fact that the Dungeon of Doom had been sent out throughout the match. And the Dungeon of Doom was rooting for Lex Luger to injure Arn Anderson during the match. Um, you'll find out why the Dungeon of Doom was there later on in the night. But, yeah, that was a pretty good match. And, um... In the end, 6-1, he cheated, I believe. Then the next match was... Um, Faces of Fear against Benoit and Mongo McMichaels. This is why the Dungeon of Doom were sitting out. Because the feud between Taskmaster and Benoit was still going on over. 
um, woman, aka Nancy, whatever. Um, so Benoit and Mongo were taking it to him. Um, Benoit McMichael did beat the Faces of Fear, but then they got jumped by the Dungeon of Doom after the match. They were just brutalizing Benoit and McMichaels. And Taskmaster kept going up to woman saying, this is what you wanted or something like that. This is who you chose. This is who you chose. Blah, 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 blah. But that's why the Dungeon of Doom was out there. Flair and them run out to save them. Flair and Jarrett. But uh, it was a little too late because both men had been laid out. Um... But, yeah, that was a pretty good match. And they were really pushing Benoit at this time, it seems like, because they kept hyping him. He's They're like, oh, Benoit's got no fear, this and that. Benoit was face-to-face -face with Ming and the Barbarian in that match a lot. Um, so I think they were trying, they were going to start pushing Benoit, but because of WCW's dumb decisions and the NWO completely taking over things, that got changed. So, next up was the WCW World Tag Team title match between the uh, Outsiders and the Harlem Heat. Yeah, I don't think there was another match before that or after that. No, it was, yeah, that was it. Anyway, this match, you know, Harlem Heat got robbed. This is the match where Colonel Parker gave the stick to Kevin Nash. Nash hits Booker T with it. Hall gets the pin. And the Outsiders become the NWO Tag Team Champions. Um, it was a pretty good match. I guess it was, I guess you could say it was decent. But, uh, eh, I don't know. So then next up was the big main event. Hulk Hogan. Versus Macho Man Randy Savage for the WCW World Heavyweight title. The whole storyline was, what is Elizabeth going to do? Is she going to join with Hogan and them? Or join with Macho Man or stay on her side or whatnot? Um, really, Macho Man... Honestly, um, they really didn't clarify what she was going to do during this match. But this match did end... In controversy with the Giant helping Hogan retain the title after not after Macho Man that laid him. Also, throughout the night, you've seen that they were playing up the whole thing with uh, uh, Nick Patrick being a part of NWO. Well, the only one defending him was Bobby the Brain Heenan, but they were playing up the whole thing. He did play a part in this match here, and like I said, Macho Man got robbed out of the match. Hulk Hogan wins. He's celebrating this and that. And then guess who shows up? Rowdy, Rowdy, Piper. Which I think was a big surprise at the time. I don't think anybody expected Piper to be at Halloween Havoc this year. Or, well, that year. Um, he comes out. He's talking smack to Hogan. Talking about, you know what? We've had battles. We've had wars that, well, Hogan said we have wars that, to settle the score, but didn't settle the score. Um, Hogan's like, you know, Piper's talking about how you need to admit I'm as big as an icon as you because I've made movies and this and that too. Because Hogan cut a promo about him just getting back from Hollywood uh, doing his little Green Ninjas movie, which was one of the worst Green Ninja movies ever. Um, so he was doing that jick before the match. Um, and any Hogan Macho Man match... Usually turns out pretty good. But anyway, back to Piper and Hogan. Piper's saying stuff. And then Hogan's like, you know what? We do finally need to have that war to settle the score. Now, here's my thing with this ending to this pay-per-view. They set this up. They're setting it up for Starcade, this and that. Honestly, my opinion, Piper did beat him at Starcade. Everybody knows that. That's in the history books, blah, blah, blah. They should put the title on the line. I mean, honestly, they should have. They should have put the title on the line, have Piper beat Hogan, and then, you know, Bischoff and them doing whatever they can to sign him or the board directors, because Bischoff, not too long afterwards, turned heel and was revealed to be behind the whole NWO thing. You know, the whole NWO thing from day one. Um, I don't think the Steiners were on this card. I think Scott was still injured. Uh... But, yeah, 
after the promo, the pay-per-view ends, but Piper still had a little bit more to say to Hogan, but the pay-per-view ended. Um, overall, this pay-per-view was a very good one. Um, had some good matches, DDP versus, uh, DDP versus, uh, Eddie Guerrero, Hogan versus Macho Man, um, the Cruiserweight title match wasn't bad, just a little too long, the Jericho, uh, six match was pretty good, um, so I'm gonna give this pay-per-view a five out of five, Halloween Havoc 1996 was a pretty good pay-per-view, I really enjoyed it when I first seen it, and I just recently enjoyed it again when I watched it, I think it was Saturday, to get prepared for this review, but uh, like I said on the Facebook Live video I did earlier, if you uh, want me to do more videos like this, like do retro wrestling pay-per-views like WWE, WCW, ECW, whatnot, uh, let me know in the comments and all that, um... Also, I need you guys to go vote on my Twitter poll to see what y'all want me to do tomorrow night. Um, also, go leave a comment under the video or the post that I have on Facebook as well if you can't get to Twitter. Um, I've already went over what the choices are. You can go see it in the post. You can go watch the video and see the post. Um, you can go check the Twitter poll and find out what it is. But, that'll do it. Like I said, I really like this pay-per-view, a 5 out of 5 pay-per-view. I just wish the build-up to Piper Hogan ended up with Hogan and Piper fight for the WCW World Heavyweight title. It's the arcade that year, but that wasn't the case. Oh, well, we saw what happened, you know, several months after that pay-per-view happened anyway, but, uh... That'll do it for this video. Please like this video. Leave a comment. Uh, subscribe for more. Go check out my Facebook uh, post or video I just did. And go vote on my Twitter poll, please. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, I'll catch you guys later. Um, peace out.